Hello and welcome to the first episode of a series that I am starting, All Achievements, One Speedrun. In this video, we will be looking at how quickly you can get all 44 achievements in Resident Evil 2 Remake. For this challenge, I will be using the most efficient strategies in terms of consistency and speed. If you are looking for a specific file, Mr. Raccoon, Combination Lock or Achievement, the timestamps will be in the description. The video is also rendered in 4K HDR10, so if you have a display that supports HDR, turn it on for the best quality. With the intro out of the way, let's get straight into the speedrun. We will be starting off this speedrun with a playthrough of Claire A on the hardcore difficulty. At the end of it, you should have 23 achievements. Some of the achievements you will have will include Minimalist, clear the game without opening up the item box, Frugalist, complete the game without using a recovery item, and a small carbon footprint, take 14,000 steps or fewer in one playthrough. So in this run, I will not be opening up the item box and I will not be using any recovery items, whilst also taking fewer than 14,000 steps. Are you okay? Wait here. I'll check it out. Don't come any closer! <laughs> Almost there. When we reach the RPD gates, we'll be getting our first achievement of the run, Welcome to the City of the Dead, and that is to make it to the police station. I also picked this moment to read the very first file of the run, Letter from Best Friend. Claire spawns with this file, and in order to find it, you just have to check the miscellaneous section on the files tab. We will be picking up the majority of handgun bullets inside the RPD, mostly for the Birkin 1 boss fight, but there is a few zombies that we will need to shoot as well. These two zombies at the end of the hallway have very low health. Shoot them a few times each for a very easy and consistent way to get past them. Oh no! So nobody knows what caused this? Thank <laughs> you. 
The next two rooms are going to give us six achievements. The first one is don't need no stinking gun and that is to kill an enemy with a knife. Next to the gunpowder on the small desk, there is a file called the uses of gunpowder. This file is different for Claire and Leon as they both have different gunpowder sets, so you will need to pick this file up once as both Claire and Leon. The next achievement is first break in. You receive this for opening up a dial safe for the first time. Inside the dial safe, you will find a hip pouch and that will give you the achievement hip to add squares. And that is to increase your inventory slots. We will also be destroying our first Mr. Raccoon of this run, giving us the vermin extermination achievement. The final two achievements we will be getting in this room is the basics of survival and customizer. Getting the speed loader and opening up these two locks on this playthrough saves a lot of time. This is because you get to have faster boss fights, especially the Birkin 1 fight, and you don't have to open up these locks in subsequent playthroughs. Once any combination lock or dial safe has been opened, it will permanently count towards the master of unlocking achievement and you will not need to worry about it in any other playthroughs. You also get the basics of survival by combining any two items together. On the hardcore difficulty, it is better to shoot zombies in the legs as it is an easier target and it has the same chance of stunning the zombie as shooting them in the head. Once you have defeated the female zombie in the library, make sure you approach the speed key door from the right side, staying as far away as possible from the sleeping zombie. This will prevent him from waking up and causing you hassle when you return to the library later on. When you unlock this door with the bolt cutters, enter with caution as the cop zombie from earlier can be standing right outside and he will grab you.
We now use what is remaining of the knife that Marvin gave us to get the achievement Eat This, and we use it on the high vis jacket zombie at the end of the hallway. <laughs> Picking up the flashbang in the star's office will do two things. The first one being is that it will give you a very important flashbang as they are very very useful throughout this run. The second and more important reason is that the liquor that is outside will reset to a static position and he will be found on the wall where the diamond key door is. This makes it very easy to walk past him. I grabbed this knife mainly for safety, just in case I get grabbed in the Birkin 1 boss fight, however I will be using it to destroy a Mr. Raccoon outside the chief's office, just to save some hang ammo. The best way to get past this liquor is to run towards him, but while hugging the wall that's on the right and looking down, he'll do an attack and he won't hit you and you'll be able to get past him no problem. There are two more zombies remaining in the library, one of them is the one asleep by the spade key door and the other one is feasting on a zombie, but he will only activate if you touch the ladder, so when you leave the storage room make sure you take the stairs. On to achievement number 9 now and that is Path to the Goddess which you get for solving the Goddess statue puzzle. Coming up is the first boss fight in the game and that is the Birkin 1 boss fight. You may also want to create your first save before this boss fight, however I will be doing mine later on. Now the strategy for this is very simple, however it is a little bit tough to execute. You want to constantly be running away from Birkin, as this is the hardcore difficulty he will be very fast and you will not be able to make any distance on him. The secret method to this fight is to aim at him when he is not attacking and that will make him start an attack and then while he is doing that you need to punish him with the handgun. Oh! <sighs> 
If you get unlucky like me and Birkin goes on top of the pipes, don't worry, just stand in an open position and make sure your back isn't facing towards a wall. When he lets go of you, just move directly away from him and the pipe won't hit you. That is the first boss fight of the game out of the way, make sure you grab all of the handgun ammo and the hand grenade before you proceed. Okay. Key card first. And then that asshole gets what's coming to him. You'll want to walk up to this liquor to aggravate him, and this will do two things. First of all, it will make the liquor reset to a different position when you exit the room. The second thing it will do is the zombie that woke up in the autopsy room will de-aggro and he will not break down the door and chase you. The pattern that you are looking for is both of the liquors on the wall on the right next to the stairs. If the liquor that you aggravated earlier is still in the same place, you'll just have to rinse and repeat this until they are both on the wall. We are now going to go into the firing range to collect two files, one Mr. Raccoon, and use the diamond key on the diamond door so we can discard it later.
Must be where that guy came from. This is the third Mr. Raccoon of the run, located outside the Chief's office. As I mentioned earlier, I will be using the knife to destroy it, however, you should have some handgun ammo to spare. The last thing you'll want to do before saving is use the heart key on the heart door down the stairs, and grab the handgun ammo that is inside. We are now making the first save of the run. If you have followed this guide correctly, you should have 9 achievements and the following stats on the records. Around 3000 steps on small carbon footprint. 0 times on minimalist. 0 times on frugalist. Between 20 and 25 minutes on sprinter. 3 out of 8 on master of unlocking. 3 out of 15 on complete vermin extermination. And 8 out of 58 on lore explorer. <laughs> So we trigger Mr. X and what I like to do is wait until Mr. X has fully spawned in and is walking towards you or when Claire has said her line. I then go outside, stand by the red bench and wait until Mr. X has made five steps towards you. After that I loop around and go into the door where he just came from.
I like to wait in this room until Mr. X has arrived. That way when I leave, I don't have to worry about dodging Mr. X and a liquor at the same time. So here you want to make sure Mr. X is following you, and then you want to enter the library from the left side of the door. This is to avoid waking up the sleeping zombie. Now you'll need to use the diamond key on the diamond door. You don't have to go in though, so you just want to make your way to the star's office while making sure Mr. X is following you. So the reason you go into the star's office is because Mr. X can't enter there, and that way he'd be walking towards the shower room which will allow you to go back into the library and move the bookcases without any interference. Behind the clock tower you will find Mr. Raccoon number 4 and a large gunpowder. We will need the gunpowder to create some extra handgun ammo for the journey to the orphanage. That worked. Be cautious when exiting the clock tower. This is because the cream jacket zombie from earlier can be standing right outside.
Right, so now we're on to the Sherry segment where we'll be getting two achievements. One of them is Hide and Seek, which is complete Sherry segment. The other one is Young Escapee, and that is to escape the bedroom within 60 seconds. This puzzle is a lot easier than it seems. All you need to do is grab the block in position number 1 and move it to number 3 and then line up the shapes appropriately. What is this? It is worth noting that I'll be picking up the three exclusive Sherry files on this playthrough, however you can pick them up later when you do the Claire B run. It's gonna be! chance show yourself now oh, oh it burns <laughs> fuck is my key
I'm coming in, Sherry! Get over here, you bitch! Good to see you again, Claire. You will now get achievement number 11, and that is Hide and Seek, which is the complete Sherry segment. On to achievement number 12, which is Never Ending Rain, Escape the Police Station. No need to waste any ammo on Mr. X, just run away from him until the shutter is opened. Once you trigger the zombies to break down the fence, you can continue to run away from Mr. X and both of the zombies until they move out of the way. This will allow you to get past the zombies without shooting them and without taking damage. This is where we get achievement number 13 and that is like skeet shooting and that is to shoot a dog or liquor out of the air. Orphanage. <clears throat> Hang on, Sherry. Oh. 
Don't stop! We are about to make our second save of the run, but there's just a few things that we're going to have to do beforehand. First things first, go into the office and pick up the report about G file, as well as the high powered SLS rounds. Hold on, Sherry. I'll be right there. I'm now going to grab the reinforced frame from this dial safe. This upgrade is very useful in the lab, and you will not need to open up this safe again for the Master of Unlocking achievement. Getting past this G-Monster is easy. Shoot him once with the handgun and he won't be able to hit you while he's going into the water.
Make sure you put the rook plug in the correct socket now because you're not going to have any spare space when you go to the next area. That's it for part 2, you should have 13 achievements and your stats should look like this. Between 6 and 7 thousand steps on a small carbon footprint. 0 times on minimalist, 0 times on frugalist. Between 45 and 50 minutes on sprinter. 4 out of 8 on master of unlocking. 4 out of 15 for complete vermin extermination. And 12 out of 58 on lore explorer. <laughs> Getting past this area the first time is really straightforward. All you need to do is shoot the first G monster that's in the water, go around on the left side, and then throw a hand grenade at the second one, and that's always going to stun him. The return trip through this area actually has a lot of randomness involved. If you get the same pattern that I did, this should actually be very simple. All you'll need to do is bait the G monster towards you. You can do this by going on the left and make sure he sees you. He will then start to come towards you, sink into the water, and you'll be able to drop off the ledge and go around him, much like the G monster from earlier. If you get poisoned here, you should definitely reset until you get past here without getting poisoned. Getting to this part is very consistent, so it shouldn't be that much of a pain if you do have to reset.
All right, Sherry. On my way. Right, so now it is time for the Birkin 2 boss fight. This one was actually way more trickier than the Birkin 1 boss fight until I finally discovered a strategy to make this fight 100% consistent. If you stand in this corner, Birkin will not be able to hit you, and all you'll need to do is wait it out until the shutter is opened. So by far the best strategy for this fight is to do most of the damage before you make it to the platform with the crane. You'll need to shoot Birkin in the eye at least 4 times with the spark shot during this fight to be able to do enough damage to bring him below the 50% HP threshold. You will also need to stay relatively close to him during this fight, if not he will do an unavoidable charge attack. I missed one of my shots here, but it's not too big of a deal, I just have to make sure I shoot him in the eye when I make it to the platform. After 4 shots, you want him to start a frenzy and as soon as he started, you need to fall down onto the platform, push the button and wait for him to drop down. Once Birkin has dropped down, you need to throw one flashbang, followed by 3 hand grenades and then another flashbang. You'll then need to position yourself in this corner, wait for Birkin to come towards you and then flash him in place. Now you will need to fire your last spark shot bullet for the fight, make your way towards the button and once the spark shot has exploded he should go down. Have I got a surprise for you. Not only is this the best way to survive the fight, it is also how we would get achievement number 14, gotcha, and that is to beat Birkin 2 with using the crane only once. This is taking forever. <sighs> Ned said her lab's not far. Wait, that cable car. Hold on, Sherry. You're gonna be fine. Almost there, Sherry. We're almost there. Good. Once you have dropped Sherry off at the cable car, don't go just yet, you'll need to go back into the sewers and pick up a vital hand grenade. Okay, better check everything. There's no turning back.
This tram is bound for Nest. Do not exit until the final destination. I'm getting you treatment. Just hold on, Sherry. It's okay. For your safety, stand clear until the doors are fully open. For your safety, stand clear until the doors are fully open. For your safety, stand clear until the doors are fully open. Welcome to Ness. Enjoy your visit. This is another one of those doors you're going to have to enter with caution because sometimes the armored zombie will be standing right outside looking at you and it will grab you instantly and you'll have no choice but to take damage. Dr. Lee, your presence is urgently requested by Chief Cartwright in the East Area. Dispensing. <laughs> Manual mode engaged. Adjust amount of solution to match cartridge capacity.
Killing these three zombies now will prevent them from standing up later and getting in the way when you want to use the signal modulator. As soon as the liquor falls out of the vent, throw a flashbang into this corner. This will make the liquor look at the flashbang and you'll be able to get past his back very easily. Here you will also get achievement number 16, that is keep their heads ringing, and that is paralyze a liquor's sense of hearing. You will need to pick up the file with somebody's note on this playthrough as you will not be coming back here on any of the B scenarios. Make sure you come into this save room to pick up the ink ribbons as the save room that we intend on saving in will not have any inside. Welcome back, Dr. Lee. You have five new messages. Ooh, damn. Should've... Packed my parka. Cooling complete. We will now be making our third and final save of this run. If you have made it this far, congratulations. You will be pleased to know that all of the hard work is out of the way. You should have 16 achievements and your record stats should look like this. Around 8,500 steps for small carbon footprint. Zero times on minimalist. Zero times on frugalist. Between one hour and one hour, 10 minutes on sprinter. Four out of eight for master of unlocking. 4 out of 15 for complete vermin extermination, and 13 out of 58 on Lore Explorer. So much for the weed infestation. Warning. You 
have dispersed a dangerous solution without authorization. Your actions have been logged, and you may be subject to disciplinary measures. When you enter this door, you will need to do a sharp left turn. This will stop the IV from grabbing you. God, the antiviral agent. Gotta get back to Sherry. Now it is time for the third boss fight of the run, Birkin 3. Providing you have the same equipment that I have, this fight is actually very straightforward. You will need to start off by using the spark shot on the top of his left leg, followed by a spark shot needle to his right arm. How you destroy the third eye is up to you. I like to bait out an attack where he does a 180 spin, showing me his back making his eye an easy target. When Birkin stands up and goes into phase 2, his HP will drop to around 60%, providing you haven't manually made it go below 60% with ammo. So you will get around an extra 10% damage for free if you don't shoot him anymore. Use the time that he is down to pick up the same ammo that I pick up. The hand grenade, the needle cartridges, the high powered rounds and a flash grenade. Phase 2 is just as easy as the first. Throw one flashbang, pop one eye, and repeat that three times and he will go down. When Birkin does go down, fire one needle cartridge into his chest, followed by four hand grenades. Birkin 3 actually has some iframes when going into phase 3, so don't do what I did and prematurely shoot him with the spark shot. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is an easy way to do Birkin 3 on Claire A Hardcore. Target has been neutralized. Ending quarantine. <sighs> Gotta get back to Sherry.
Sherry. I want to walk faster. I don't want to rush you, but we have to go. Let's get the hell out of here. Get you out of this place. We are now onto the final boss fight of the Claire A Hardcore run, and that is Birkin 4. There is actually a fair bit of pressure on you for this fight, because you need to be able to complete it with 4 minutes left on the clock to get the with time to spare achievement. This wouldn't be much of a problem, but since we will not be actually finishing the Claire B speedrun, you must get this achievement on this playthrough. I don't really have any specific strategies for this fight, but I can give you a little bit of advice. Much like the Birkin 1 fight, you want to be running away from him when he is attacking, and that way he will not be able to hit you. If he is doing the charge attack, you will need to go straight to the left or to the right, whichever way there is room. This should put you out of range of his charge attack. If you have one hand grenade to spare, which you should have if you have followed this guide correctly, use it on Birkin when he is climbing up the walls to knock him down. I also wouldn't recommend shooting Birkin if he is really high up on the walls. It seems a lot of the bullets will just not hit him. My final piece of advice is to not go full Rambo and just spam every bit of minigun ammo into his chest. Be patient and wait for the eyes to respawn and take them out in groups.
Congratulations guys, you should have just received achievement number 17 with time to spare, and you should also receive a further 6 achievements for completing this run. A heroine emerges which is to complete Claire's story, Sizzling Scarlet Hero which is to complete Claire's story on Hardcore or Standard with an S rank, Hardcore College Student which is to complete Claire's story on Hardcore, Frugalist which is to complete the game without using any recovery items, Minimalist which is clear the game without opening up the item box, and finally, a small carbon footprint. Take 14,000 steps or fewer in one playthrough. Your records and achievements should also look like this. You only need to worry about Master of Unlocking, which is 4 out of 8, Complete Vermin Extermination, which should be 4 out of 15, and Lore Explorer, which should be 13 out of 58. We will now be moving on to Leon B Hardcore NG+. This run is mainly for file cleanup and any of the exclusive Leon achievements that you will not be able to get in the Claire playthroughs. Claire, I hope you made it here. You should have finished the Claire A Hardcore playthrough with an S plus ranking. That will give you the minigun in the item box and we'll be using that weapon for the majority of the Leon B playthrough. Now I fix your brain. On the desk next to Elliot, you will find the scrap of paper file, only available in the B scenarios. Behind the leather travel bag, you will find the fifth Mr. Raccoon of the run.
In the operation room on the desk on the right, you will find the record of events file. As I mentioned towards the beginning of this video, you must pick up the uses of gunpowder file again as Leon, because he has a different gunpowder set to Claire. Inside the star's office, we will be getting the internal memo and Claire's memo. Claire's memo is a Leon exclusive, so make sure you don't forget it. At the end of the hallway outside the storage room, we'll be getting the file to any survivors. Inside the storage room on the desk, you will find some guy's scribblings. This is where we will be getting achievement number 24, which is hats off, and that is shoot off Mr. X's hat. On the leather seat outside the goddess statue, we will be getting the notebook with missing page.
Somebody's watching me. Hey, I'm not done talking to you. If you haven't already, make sure you read the file orientation letter. This is Leon's equivalent to Claire's letter from best friend, and you will need to find it within the MISC section of the files tab. In the cell block next to the square crank you will find the memo jail power panel and that is a Leon exclusive file.
Inside the clock tower on the small round table is the repair plan file. have to write a report on this. There are two files that can be found inside Ben's cell. One of them is Ben's memo, which is located on the desk. The second is interview transcript, and that is automatically read when you examine Ben's dead body. Is that the intel you needed? Unfortunately, no. Ben didn't come through. Well, what exactly are you looking for? More info on the people responsible for this mess. Road's out. Going through that gun shop looks like the only way.
in Kendo's gun shop we will be getting the Chasing Jill achievement, however reading this file does not count towards Lore Explorer. Heard of the Umbrella Corporation? They're a pharmaceutical company secretly making bioweapons. They have a virus. It turns people into indestructible monsters. That explains the horrible things I've seen. That's why I'm looking for a net Based on what you've said, the sewer seems fitting. Gee, thanks. Can't imagine a real scientist being down here. Come on. Sewers are run by the city. How could they have a facility without the authorities knowing? Jesus! That an earthquake? What the hell? I would highly recommend grabbing these ink ribbons on the barrel to the right. This is so you can save before Ada, and if you do not pick these ink ribbons up, there are none in the actual save room that you'll be using. No chance. You're stuck with me to the end. After the alligator encounter, we will be getting the sixth Mr. Raccoon. This is located on a ledge behind the garbage in the corner. Chew on that, you overgrown son of a bitch. Leon, up here. What the hell was? Just get up here. Can't say I didn't warn you. You said the virus turned people into monsters, not reptiles. Fair point. I'm just impressed you made it in one piece. Umbrella sells monsters like that to who? Our military? Somebody else's? They don't sell the monsters. They sell the viruses that make them. And Annette is who makes the viruses. Scary as that alligator was, Annette is far more dangerous. So if you collected the ink ribbons from the barrel or you have some in the item box from earlier, this is where you would want to make your save. I found out the hard way that there were no ink ribbons in this room, so I just continued without saving. We are now moving on to the Ada segment. There are two exclusive files to get, and one Mr. Raccoon. But there is also an achievement, one slick super spy to be in fact, which requires you to complete the Ada segment without shooting. So for now, just don't shoot any bullets. Here is the first file that you will need to pick up in the Ada scenario, September Inspection, Week 1.
I like to bait out a grab from this zombie so I can just run straight past him. And if I'm lucky enough, I'll be able to make it to the elevator without taking any damage. Here we will be making another save. This will allow us to destroy the Mr. Raccoon and get one slick super spy in the same playthrough. Because when you reload this save, you will have zero shots fired during the Ada segment and the Raccoon will stay destroyed. But for now, you should have 25 achievements and your record should look like this. Master of Unlocking will remain unchanged for this playthrough, staying at 4 out of 8. Complete Vermin Extermination will be 6 out of 15. And Lore Explorer should be 27 out of 58. <laughs> The seventh Mr. Raccoon is located in the corner behind the incinerator. After this, you will reload the save and you will have zero shots fired. The second Ada exclusive file can be found next to the lever, September Inspection, Week 2. Bravo. Gonna burn me alive now. You'll never get your filthy hands on the G. I'm not the only one after it. You realize that. And you won't die alone. Not gonna happen. You will now receive achievement number 26, one slick super spy, and that is to complete the Ada segment using only the EMF visualizer. Follows right after by achievement number 27, hack complete, and that is to complete Ada segment.
cable car. Interesting. Don't forget this file found on the desk as soon as you enter the sewers control room. Copy of emails to Umbrella HQ. I'm coming, Ada. Right next to the T-bar handle is a Leon B exclusive file, Claire's note, and if you go down the stairs you will also find the delivery receipt. Oh my god, this is getting worse. Don't be like me and nearly forget the 8th Mr. Raccoon of the run, found in the entrance to the supply storage room behind a white box.
I make another save here just so I can check my achievements and records track. You should have 27 achievements, 8 out of 15 for complete vermin extermination, and 31 out of 58 for lore explorer. <laughs> Right next to the typewriter you'll get the sewers company pamphlet and on the desk next to where you use the plugs you'll get the unlocking the U area door file. Let's hope that's the last of them. The cable car will take us down to us. My wristbands, I took it to ride. Nice. Where'd you get that? Borrowed it. one-way ride. This tram so is bound for nest. Do not exit until the final destination. Welcome to Nest. 
enjoy your visit. You will find the ninth Mr. Raccoon of the run on a table inside the cafeteria, right next to the ladder. There is another two files you're going to collect here, one of them is Naproom Log, which is on the computer, and the other is ID Wristbands, which is on the wall inside the save room. Right next to the signal modulator, there will be a dead soldier and he will have the Special Forces Recording file. On a desk in the drug testing lab, you will find the file Herbicide Synthesis. Manual mode engaged. Adjust amount of solution to match cartridge capacity. Welcome back, Dr. Lee. You have five new messages. Ugh. Who left the freezer open? Complete. 
On a computer inside the low temp testing lab, you will find Wayne Lee's inbox. Did the trick. Warning. You have this to without authorization. Your actions have been locked, and you may be subject to disciplinary measures. Once you've gotten the level 3 wristband, you will be able to read this file inside the presentation room, and that is Brian Cartwright's inbox. After you have used the signal modulator, go to this computer to read the file William Birkin's inbox. The last file that you'll be getting in the Leon B playthrough is the research diary, and that is found on a computer in the P4 level testing lab. All right, now back to Ada.
Without overcomplicating things, for this fight you want to keep Mr. X stunlocked in the position he spawns in, while you stand directly opposite to him in the arena. That is achievement number 28, in the blink of an eye, and that is to defeat Super Tyrant with 5 plus minutes left until detonation. And that's it for the Leon B run. You will now gain another 4 achievements, they are as follows. A hero emerges, complete Leon story. Broken umbrella and that is to witness the true ending. Leon S Kennedy and that is to complete Leon story on standard or hardcore with an S rank. And hardcore rookie, complete Leon story on hardcore.
your record should also look like this. Still 4 out of 8 for Master of Unlocking, 9 out of 15 for Complete Vermin Extermination, and 41 out of 58 for Lore Explorer. The final run before we move on to Hunk plus DLC is Claire B Assisted. We will be getting 9 more achievements in this run. The achievements remaining for the main game are Master of Unlocking, Open All the Safes and Locks in the Game, Complete Vermin Extermination, Destroy All Mr. Raccoons, Lore Explorer, Read All the Files, A Waste of Space, Expand Inventory Slots to the Max, Treasure Hunter, Using the Photo Hints, Find Two Hidden Items, Zombie Roundup, Kill Three Enemies at Once with a Subweapon, Bon Appetit, Shoot the Grenade You Fed to an Enemy, A Vault-like Mind, Open a Portable Safe, and the final achievement on the list is That'll Hold em. Use wooden boards to board up a window. We're also going to get the 10th Mr. Raccoon of the run, right at the beginning of the Claire B scenario. This particular Mr. Raccoon may have also been obtained at the start of the Leon B playthrough as well. This is an easy spot to get the zombie roundup achievement. On the radiator inside the safe room there is a hand grenade and that can be used to kill at least three enemies in the courtyard outside. There are six hip pouches that we're going to have to collect throughout this run. The first one is on the reception desk in the main hall. This wooden board is only available on the assisted difficulty and you can use it early on to get the that'll hold them achievement.
Hip pouch number 2 is acquired from the very same dial safe that we used in the Claire A Hardcore playthrough. Inside the locker room, make sure you pick up the Bejeweled Box and right next to it the Portable Safe Instructions file. Also, don't forget to do the Cap Locker, that will bring the Master of Unlocking total up to 5 out of 8. Make sure you grab the Claire B exclusive file, Leon's memo, and the 11th Mr. Raccoon of the Run, hidden in the back of the office behind two cardboard boxes. This is the 6th lock that you will need to unlock for the Master of Unlocking achievement. The code for this one is DCM. Make sure you grab the red book before leaving the library. This is needed to get the red jewel for the bejeweled box. This 
way. It won't move. You got it. So, what's your mom like? She works at Umbrella. She's making an important medicine. Umbrella? That big pharmaceutical company? you'll get to see her again soon. The third hit pouch of the run is found inside this locker, right next to the typewriter. Worked with my mom, but he's gone. Wow, both of my parents are gone. It's just me and my brother. Over there! It's closed. Okay. Key card first, and then that asshole gets what's coming to him. This is where I decided to get the Bon Appetit achievement, and that is shoot the grenade you fed to an enemy. Counter attack the licker after he jumps on you. When you stand up, his head will be in the air, making his mouth an easy target. Must be where that guy came from. On this table, just outside the elevator, you will find the Raccoon Monthly June issue. Is the police chief? On the chief's desk you will find the file, copy of emails to Chief Irons, and on the table in the middle of the room you will find the taxidermy log. You will also find the repair shop letter in the private collection room. I make my first save for the Claire B playthrough. You should have 35 achievements and your record should look like this. 6 out of 8 for the Master of Unlocking. 11 out of 15 for Complete Vermin Extermination. And 48 out of 58 for Lore Explorer. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
We're going to use the heart key down the stairs once again, but this time we're going to grab a portable safe, jump through the broken glass, and grab the confiscation report from the observation room. Here is the 12th Mr. Raccoon of the run, located in the small storage room on the top shelf. Move it. Inside the art room you will find the file, art article, the redstone. Inside the waiting room you will find the 7th safe that you will need to unlock to get the Master of Unlocking achievement.
That worked. Is this? Must be the door out of here. <gasps> oh, no, it's him. <gasps> now doors locked where are you show yourself I know you're in here the longer it takes me to find you the worse it's gonna be Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, 
has got to be here somewhere. God damn it! Again, Claire. Just you wait, asshole. like the only way forward. The 13th Mr. Raccoon is located on the dashboard inside this bus. That's gotta be the orphanage. Hang on, Sherry. The 
14th Mr. Raccoon of the Run is found inside the nursery just as you enter the room. You will also want to make sure that you go into the bathroom so that you can get the letter from the director file. Unfortunately, I had to cut out the next two minutes of the game audio and replace it with music. This is down to a recording issue, and this is the only place this happens in the entire video. You should now get achievement number 36, Master of Unlocking, by unlocking this final combination lock. This is where I'll be making my final save in the run. You should have 36 achievements and your records should be as follows. 14 out of 15 for Complete Vermin Extermination and 51 out of 58 for Lore Explorer. Just like Leon, right next to the T-bar handle there will be a Claire exclusive, and this file is Leon's note. Just before you go down the ladder, make sure you pick up the sewers key. We will need this later to be able to return to the RPD.
Once we've reached the top of the elevator, we will be finding hip pouch number 4 and the hidden places film roll, which is needed to get the treasure hunter achievement. After securing the film roll, we will be making our way through the workers break room to return to the RPD. Inside the break room, we will find the Jazz Festival Flyer. The first thing we're going to do after re-entering the RPD is to develop the Hiding Places film roll. You will find the file Medicinal Benefits of Herbs as soon as you enter the darkroom. Once you have developed the film roll, you must make your way to the star's office where you will find a file inside the armory. Once you have used the USB dongle to unlock the armory, you will find the file Letter to Stars Members. From the armory, make your way to Albert Wesker's desk, where you will find the first item needed for the Treasure Hunter Trophy. Please note that you must pick up these two items, otherwise they will not count towards the achievement. From the star's office, you'll need to make your way to the linen room, which is locked with the diamond key, and inside you will find the second portable safe that you will need. You will get achievement number 37, A Vault Like Mind, after solving the first portable safe. Once you've spent about half an hour solving these puzzles, you will need to make your way to the safety deposit room to use the keys. This will grant you hip pouch number 5, and that means there's only one left in the game you'll need to collect.
Finally, once you've secured the hip pouch, you'll need to make your way to the press room where you'll get the second item for the treasure hunter trophy. Once you've gotten the Treasure Hunter achievement, you'll need to make your way back to the sewers so you can defeat Birkin 2, and then make your way to the lab where you'll get the last three achievements for the main game. Alright, Sherry. On my way.
sorry, Sherry. This is taking forever. Her lab's not far. Wait, that cable car. <sighs> Hold on, Sherry. You're gonna be fine. <sighs> almost there, Sherry. <sighs> We're almost there. Good. The cable car. Okay. Better check everything. There's no turning back. This tram is bound for Nest. Do not exit until the final destination. Hold on, Sherry. It's okay. For your safety, stand clear until the doors are fully open. For your safety, stand clear until the doors are fully open. For your safety, stand clear until the doors are fully open. Welcome to Nest. Enjoy your visit. Once you have dropped Sherry into the bed, you will find a laptop with the Nest Wide Alert file on it. All that is left to do now is to get the signal modulator, open up the sleeping pods, which will reveal one Mr. Raccoon, the final hit pouch, and the final file, which should be Wayne Lee's note. Your presence is urgently requested by Chief Cartwright in the East Area. And that's the end of the main game. If you have followed this guide correctly, you should get complete vermin extermination, a waste of space, and lore explorer, bringing the total amount of achievements to 41. So there is now only three achievements left that we'll need to get in the game. Grim Reaper, which is to complete the fourth survivor extra mode. Hell of a Sheriff, which is to complete the no way out scenario on no training mode and Gotham, destroy all Mr. Raccoons hidden in the Ghost Survivors. And we will be starting off with the Grim Reaper achievement. I'm at point K-12. Need info on my extraction point. Guess there's no keeping down the Grim Reaper, huh? Good. My extraction point. I shoot all three of the beginning zombies with the shotgun. This is so they stagger and I can squeeze past them easily.
if you do the same arch line that I do in this room, you shouldn't get bit by any of these dogs. There are six dogs and two zombies in this room. I start by using the handgun to shoot a leg off the female zombie. This is so she can't attack me while I'm trying to dispatch of the dogs. Then I switch to the SMG so I can easily kill all of the dogs in the room. As long as you're quick through here and shoot the last zombie, you will always get through here without taking any damage. If you get the same RNG that I do on these monsters, just run past them on the right, while not forgetting to shoot the G-monster on the left. If the G-monster on the right does any other attack than shown on screen, shoot him first and then shoot the G-monster on the left. It is easy enough to run through this horde of zombies, but there is a small chance that you'll get grabbed by doing this method. To defeat this liquor, three or four magnum bullets will do the trick. Using the SMG, shoot the same zombies that I do in the legs until they either stagger or fall over. But try and be quick because the zombies at the back could grab you. Three magnum shots will take out this liquor. The easiest and most consistent way to get past Mr. X is to shoot him in the head with one fully charged magnum bullet. You'll want to use the shotgun to get past the east office easily. Shoot the zombies in the leg, they should either fall over or stagger. After getting to the door of the west office, start walking. This will stop the liquor in the next hallway from attacking you. Uh. 
You can use a flash grenade here to stun Mr. X and the few zombies. Just be cautious because Mr. X can attack instantly sometimes after being flashed. You can use the remainder of your SMG ammo to stun these two IVs. You need to get close to this door in order for the zombie to open it and then you can just use the shotgun to push him backwards. You can use one hand grenade through this door to eliminate most of the zombies. There is usually one left alive which you can use the shotgun on. And then you want to start walking because there is a licker again in the next hallway. If you do a wide arch when coming out of this doorway, the G-Monster should do the same attack and you'll be able to get past him and get down the ladder. You should have one flashbang remaining which you can use on the rooftop. This will stun the two lickers and the two floor zombies. Two well-placed hand grenades will stun the G-Monster and kill most of the enemies behind him. You might need to use the Magnum to finish off one or two of them. And for the last few zombies, anyone that's standing up and is ready to attack you, just shoot them once with the Magnum. We will now be moving on to the Ghost Survivors DLC where we'll be getting the final two achievements. Starting off with the No Time to Mourn scenario, you will find the first Mr. Raccoon on top of the shelf inside the gun shop. There is a really cool strategy you can do here. You bait the explosive canister zombie towards you, shoot off his legs so the canister drops onto the floor, then you spawn in the liquor where you can safely blow up the gas canister and dispatch of him easily. The second Mr. Raccoon in the No Time to Mourn scenario is on top of the pipes where you fight Birkin in the main game. You can run past the first three zombies in this walkway consistently, but sometimes the last two can grab you so I like to shoot them with the shotgun.
you need to make space for the flash grenade that you're about to get. What you can do is discard the blue herb and create some shotgun ammo and that will give you plenty of space. You can easily get past this G-Monster by shooting him once with the spark shot, and we're now going to make our way lower into the sewers so we can pick up some needle cartridges. Now it is very important that when you come back through this area, the G-Monster is in the water and he's not chasing you. To do this, I initially jump off the ledge and make him come out of the water again. I then use the invincibility frames you get when climbing ledges or objects to avoid getting hit. Once I'm on the top of the ledge, I then shoot him once and he'll go back down into the water, and as long as you're fast enough, he won't come back out. This will allow you to safely get the third Mr. Raccoon in the No Time to Mon scenario, which is located up here on a barrel. You will find the fourth and final Mr. Raccoon in this scenario inside a sewage pipe behind this ivy.
I shoot these zombies in the legs with the shotgun, so I do just enough damage to stagger them, but not too much so that they would explode and poison me. You should have one hand grenade and one flash grenade remaining, and we'll be using it here. Starting off with the hand grenade to clear out some of the initial zombies, followed by a flash grenade that will stun the rest of the zombies. However, you may have a plant zombie still left alive, so you can use whatever ammo you have left to stun him, and then you can run past the rest of the zombies. That's it for the no time to mourn scenario. You should have 4 out of 10 on the Mr. Raccoons. And we will now be moving on to the second scenario, Runaway. Shooting the first pale head three times will slow him down enough for you to be able to run past him. Make sure to pick up the flashbang from this resupply machine. This will be extremely useful when we enter the cell blocks. You'll want to make sure that both of the pale heads inside the bus are aligned before you shoot them with the high powered rounds. This will stun both of them and you'll be able to squeeze by them no problem. Make sure you are walking when approaching the door to the basketball court. This will stop any liquor from coming to attack you. You'll then need to walk towards the zombie that's on the floor. Use the knife to defeat him which will give you the old key. And just to the left you'll find the first Mr. Raccoon of this scenario on the bench. When you make it to the street outside the gun shop, there are two things you will need in this area. One of them is the second Mr. Raccoon which is hidden in the back of the ambulance. The other thing is the bonus old key. Picking up the bonus old key makes getting the third Mr. Raccoon much easier, as you can easily bypass most of the enemies in the cell block. 
The old key is found inside the backpack that is being carried by the Palehead. To be able to get the third and final Mr. Raccoon in the Runaway scenario, you must first trigger opening the doors in the cell block by running towards the enemies. Once you hear the sound of the cell doors activating, double back and the door on the left will now be open. The third and final Mr. Raccoon is found inside the middle cell on the table. If you wait here for a few seconds, some of the zombies will actually go all the way around the cell blocks, making going through this door a lot safer. Using the flashbang you picked up by the bus, you can now stun all of these zombies and get to the end of the level. With the runaway scenario complete, you should have 7 out of 10 for the Mr. Raccoons, and we will now be moving on to Forgotten Soldier. You'll need the white high-grade gunpowder from this zombie's backpack. Grab the flash grenade from this resupply machine. This will save you a lot of trouble in one room in particular. You'll find another white high-grade gunpowder in this zombie's backpack. When you reach this resupply machine, you'll need to grab the Lightning Hawk. The first Mr. Raccoon in Forgotten Soldier is hidden on this steel bar. A cool trick you can do here is kill both of these zombies before leaving the elevator. Then you'll be able to just run past the plant zombie. You'll now get your first yellow high-grade gunpowder of the run, combine this with the white high-grade gunpowder that you have left, and you'll be able to make one hand grenade. This is the tough room that you will use the flash grenade in. It will stun every zombie apart from one of the plant zombies, which you can just stun with the SMG. Grab the magnum ammo from this resupply machine, and use the magnum and one hand grenade to clear out the bridge. Once you are close enough to the lab entrance doors, they will begin to open and Mr. X will spawn. Use one hand grenade to deal a lot of damage to Mr. X and kill some of the surrounding zombies. You can finish Mr. X off with one lightning hawk round, 
And from here, you'll be able to get the second and final Mr. Raccoon in the Forgotten Soldier scenario. But don't forget to pick up the gunpowder from the backpack to create one hand grenade and some submachine gun ammo. And that's 3 out of the 4 Ghost Survivors scenarios completed, with 9 out of 10 Mr. Raccoons collected. The 4th and final Ghost Survivors scenario is No Way Out. You will find 1 Mr. Raccoon in this scenario which will give you the Gotham achievement, but you will also need to complete this scenario to get the Hell of a Sheriff achievement. And that is to complete the No Way Out scenario without using training mode. The No Way Out scenario is by far the most difficult out of the 4 Ghost Survivors DLCs. The best advice I can give to you is to just watch the video and play just like how I play. But I'll give you some insight into how this wave based scenario works. The first wave is capped at 10 zombies, so as long as you don't kill the 10th zombie, the next wave won't commence. For the first two waves, you will only be using the handgun. There will also be some gas canister zombies spawning. I will be killing them in certain positions so you can get the most use out of the gas canisters. Grab the flash grenade from this backpack as well as the two herbs, but discard all of the herbs. This will make the backpack disappear and it will not be lingering on the floor causing you hassle. At around 7 on the zombie defeated counter, the first gas canister zombie will spawn. The gas canister will need to be dropped as close as possible to the door that he comes through. Wave 2 is capped at 20 zombies. This gas canister will need to be dropped by the windowless metal door in the corner. Wave 3 is capped at 30 zombies. You can now shoot these gas canisters and they will defeat 6 zombies in total and they won't even enter the building. Grabbing the MQ-11, you can shoot these 3 poisonous zombies. Wave 4 is capped at 40 zombies. Use the shotgun to only kill 2 zombies by this door. If you kill 3, when you kill the next gas canister zombie, you will actually be destroying 2 gas canisters for the same amount of kills, which is not very efficient. Use the spark shot to keep this gas canister zombie in place, and when he goes down, the gas canister will be right next to the door. Wave number 5 is capped at 50 zombies. We will start by blowing up this gas canister, and that's going to spawn in a backpack containing the chemical flamethrower. Equip the flamethrower and use it to kill these 4 poison zombies. 
and that will give us the 10th and final Mr. Raccoon in the Ghost Survivor scenarios. Wave number 6 is capped at 70 zombies. The strategy here is to use the spark shot to dispatch of as many zombies as you can one by one until you become overrun and then you use the flashbang. You can use this gas canister at the end of the wave to take out a large amount of the remaining zombies. Wave number 7 is capped at 85 zombies. This wave is very similar to the last one. Take out the zombies one by one in this corner, and when you become overrun, instead of using the flashbang, you'll be using the anti-tank rocket. The eighth and final wave contains 15 zombies. Start off by using the flamethrower on these two pale heads. And then using the flamethrower to penetrate the door, exploding the gas canister zombie outside. Use the flamethrower once again to destroy the gas canister zombie at the back of the pack. And use a mixture of the flamethrower and the MQ-11 to kill the remaining three zombies.
You should now get the 44th and final achievement in Resident Evil 2 Remake, Hell of a Sheriff. And that's it for the first episode of the All Achievements 1 Speedrun series. We managed to get all 44 achievements in Resident Evil 2 Remake in 3 hours, 40 minutes and 30 seconds. That works out to around 1 achievement every 5 minutes. Most of the gameplay for this video was captured live on stream, so be sure to subscribe to me on YouTube and follow me on Twitch so you don't miss any live streams. If you would like to connect with me outside of YouTube, feel free to join my Discord server over at discord.gg forward slash trance. Let me know down in the comments below which game I should do next in this style. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.